So that's, so again, tier two is layered on top of tier one for some students. Some students may be unimpressed with the combination of tier one and tier two interventions and may need tier three interventions. These are the individualized, function-based, positive behavior support plans that Richard talked about. Well, I don't know if he talked about the plans. He talked about the functions. But why assess function if you're not going to do something about it um, yesterday? So here, we identify what the basic need is that the student is trying to meet with their problem behavior, what the function is. Right? And then we design an individualized plan to teach adaptive pro-social skills, to change the environments, to make problem behavior less likely, and to stop inadvertently reinforcing the problem behavior. Because again, as you heard this morning, if problem behavior is occurring, it's because it's being not deliberately, but inadvertently reinforced. This one is just as important as the others. I, I beg you to, to understand, if you don't already understand, the problem behavior occurs because of a mismatch between the person and the environment. There is no such thing as a person who engages in problem behavior for the sake of the problem behavior. It happens because there's a mismatch of some sort between the person and the environment. And by environment, I don't mean just like the air and the noise and what's on the walls. I mean the people environment, the social environment, the academic environment. What's the source of that mismatch? What's the source of the mismatch? And how can I adjust the environment to make a better match? And how can I teach the student skills that will result in a better match? It's not just a matter of changing the environment. It's also a matter of teaching the student that required skills. So I'm not talking about tier three today because that wasn't my assignment. I would beg you though to think about the number of tier three kids you have in your school and, and whether or not those tier three kids are in an environment that reinforces, systematically reinforces pro-social behavior. I bet they're not. And the first step in solving the problems for the tier three kids may be to start at tier one and tier two and work our way up. So I think it's really important to keep our eyes on the prize here. School-wide PBS means school-wide PBS. All means all. Everyone in the school ought to be part of the school-wide PBS program, right? Um, so. And what we know about decreasing problem behavior at a school-wide level, school level is that if we can get a handle on the school-wide problem behavior, we also have more time. Teachers have more time to deal with the academic piece of it, which is really why we're teachers in the first place, right? Like no teacher signed up to be a teacher saying, yes, what I really want to be is a behavior cop, <laughs> right? I want to teach kids stuff, but my time is so much spent being a behavior cop now, I'm, I don't have that much time to teach. If I can get a handle on the, on the problem behavior, uh, teaching becomes that much easier. So that becomes really critical. There's one question from the online audience and from Shirley. Um, does, um, you know, is, is SECO uh, faded over time? So once they start this program, it's successful. Is it faded over time? Sure, check in, check out is uh, not a program that you want kids on forever, right? It's a, in, it's a way of, you, check in, check out is designed to teach kids to self-monitor and to self-manage. So if check in, check out is effective, you don't need it forever because they've now learned to self-monitor and to self-manage without the sheets of paper and the little check-in system and the rewards and blah, blah, blah. It's never, you never want to withdraw a behavior support system, but you can gradually fade it over time. Fewer check-ins, less, fr less, um, less frequent check-ins, less frequent rewards given, and so forth and so on. So yeah, absolutely, that's a great question and it's important to try to fade that. The tier one interventions are never faded. Tier one is tier one. Beginning of the school year, end of the school year, everybody, the tier one keeps happening, right? 
Tier one, you never fade. Tier two, maybe temporary. Tier three, hopefully, is also temporary until we've solved that problem. I hope this was a useful and um, also perhaps thought-provoking um, uh, chunk of time to help you think through, if you're doing school-wide PBS, how to adapt it so that kids with autism and other developmental disabilities can be part of it. And if you're not doing it, well, I'll, I'll make sure I put up the BC school-wide PBS website so you can see it. Thanks a lot. Thanks.